Hello, welcome back to episode two in the World Takeover video series. I'm Wilfie Harig. My hand is not the best, but not the worst. I'm not sure whether to mulligan or not. The thing to its advantage is that it has private contracts, which is some economy. And we're playing against Chaos Theory, so this, they're probably not going to run early. But I feel like we could do better. So this hand is basically the same, but a little better because it has um, wormhole instead of no. That doesn't make sense. Let's think about this for a sec. Okay, so let's put this on HQ, put this on R and D, and play this in a remote. So Kessler usually tries to. They either they're playing the bag by the deck, or which I've had some success with recently, but it's not extremely strong. Or they're usually trying to, but they usually try to focus on a magnum opus of economy. So I figure even if, if this private, private contract is unprotected, it's still going to be too much of a hit to our opponent's resources early, um, unless they have the opus in their opening hand, which is still is not very likely. Usually they have to spend some time to find it. So I figure that we can get up to 10 credits and start to establish a remote. So they've bookmarked. What does bookmark mean? I'm not quite sure, but it is important to know that it is a good anti plascrete Three Jacksons. Um, you don't see that every day. If I were so inclined, I might uh, complain about the Jinteki.net shuffler, but that is not really my style. Um, so I can Jackson, but I think I'd rather just uh, contract twice and restructure just because I want to get play this restructure this turn and so if I Jackson use Jackson then I'll I won't get the advantage of being able to restructure this turn so I think it's better to wait a, an extra turn oh what's happening they may be misclicked uh, sure so they are going to choose to trash the private contracts which is a, a little annoying because I was expecting it to not be trashed but this was kind of the situation in which I expect it would be trashed, which is after they had played Opus and used it a couple times. So it is not too big a deal. So let's use Jackson, and then we can oversight this wormhole. Wait, what happens if... No, it needs to be broken, right? I was just thinking, yeah. It is a bit annoying that they can just run R&D, but... I feel like these kind of decks running randomly for single accesses isn't especially what you want to do, especially when the, once they've already played Opus. Um, but what I mean by that is that since Wormhole doesn't do anything at the moment, um, our opponent can choose to just let the ability fire. So I think I will Jackson once then put this on I want to put something on R&D, I don't want it to be the other wormhole but I also want this curtain wall to go on a remote which can start scoring soon but I think that might be a little bit in the future so I'll put this on R&D and this on server 2 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 um, what should I discard? I, th I don't want to hmm I think the spider web will keep them out but I don't, I do kind of want this Chrisim Grin and this other Jackson, so I might just discard two agendas even though I want, mm, no, I'll discard the Chrisim Grin and the Jackson. Just because I'd like to, I assume at this point, oh, I was going to say, I assume at this point my opponent will run archives, but they've just opused a couple times. So maybe they are doing some bag by the thing, I'm not quite sure. Uh, okay, so this, that was perfect to draw this curtain wall, so that's Jackson once more. Then oversight the curtain wall on R and D, and put this on server two. Then I'll discard a posted bounty just because we, now we have seven points in hand, and use Jackson if my opponent runs archives. Although it is a little like, but the bag by the deck usually doesn't play these cards. But it is a little worrying because our hand at the moment is so weak to legwork. Okay, so they use the bookmark um, without trashing the bookmark. 
Haiti shard, use Haiti shard. Okay, you can score a post valley. Oh, that I'm glad that didn't that could have turned out much worse. Uh, so yep. Let's things I can actually leave this oversight for curtain ball here for a turn, but I don't think I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna return it just because I really don't want to get trashed by anything and of course my opponent is getting into lady range. Like range where they can play lady and then break, so I really don't want that to happen. Um, so actually it is possible I might want to just not even run, like not even install in archives yet, but hmm, I think I'll put this on R&D, put this in server 2, and then maybe I'll, yeah, let's put this Jackson in new server I think. So this has a couple, oh, sneaked out beta. Oh, that's bad. Um, that's really bad. Should I have expected that my opponent had sneak door beta? I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, they have it anyway. So they've managed to steal three points, which is okay. Not, not the end of the world. Uh, okay, so let's get rid of this government takeover this turn. So let's draw. Um, wait, how does... Chris Ingrid work with Sneak Door Beta. I never know. So successor runs against this server. So you have to put it on archives, right? Which is not what I want to do. So let's Jackson again. And then put this data pike on archives and discard government takeover. Is that right? Hmm. I think so, because Chris and Grid says successful runs against this server. Yes, and then Sneakdoor says if successful, okay. So, because what I really want is this Chris and Grid on HQ. Wait, successful run on HQ. Oh god. Wait, does this mean that either a Sneakdoor run or a successful run on HQ naturally will trigger the... Alright, uh, you'll have to bear with me for a second. I will pause this broadcast and be back shortly. Okay, so I'm back. I honestly looked up the rulings on the internet and I'm only a little less confused. But from what I can tell, if you put Chris Imgrid on either H, like Sneak Door on either HQ or Archive, Archives or HQ will trash the off the grid. So let's put this on. Hmm. Let's use Jackson. Shuffle in one, two, three. Then maybe I just shouldn't worry about off the grid at all and just put this GFI in the server. Yeah, I feel like this GFI is pretty safe already, so let's just do that. Um, and we still have enough to res all our ice, basically. Um, and then next turn, if we triple advance, I can decide whether to keep the Atlas in hand um, or trash the Atlas. And I think I'm going to keep the Atlas in hand. Let's trash the Scorched Earth just because, um, since my opponent has Bookmark, it's basically impossible to kill them with it if they're cognizant of the threat, which I assume they are. Hmm. So this is interesting because I'm not sure what I want to do with the Atlas. I can just Atlas for another Atlas. It's house, hmm. Like, the thing is with off the grid, off the grid does help in making this server secure, this next server, like the remote server, not any of my other servers. But against Sneak Door Beta, I'm still not sure how effective it would be to put Chris in grid on HQ just because they can sneak door. Wait. Hmm. No, I'm still confused about this sneak door better Chris and Grid thing. Hopefully someone who knows more about the rules than me will um, help me in the comments. Um, but at least this time I'm going to hedge fund and then single advance just because I want to have it at least one counter on it.
makes a run in server 3. Yes, that is the Jackson, so that's fine. We have another Jackson in hand, and I really want to tax my opponent's credits. Um, but I am expecting them to have like legwork at some point. I know that doesn't quite matter right now, but I'm just looking at their influence and trying to work out what Hades shard means, especially. And they have the same old thing, so. Um, but let's, for now, let's just single, single over advanced score this atlas. So 32 credits, this costs 25, this costs 6, so 31, um, we'll see how it goes. Oh, test run, that's interesting. Fem, yep, what is being femmed? The ice and R&D. Oh, that's funny. Oh, it only has one subroutine anyway. Yep. Um, one, two, three, four. So they need to hit, I think, the government takeover to win with indexing. So I think it's not really worth trying to tax them a credit. Oh, I can, uh, of course, use Atlas. I am I remember that something was happening. Uh, okay, no more action, then let's use Atlas to get... Hmm, I have one click left. So I can, I think the best thing to get is just... Um... Wait, is there no other atlas? Is there only one atlas? There must be more atlases, right? Uh, bear with me for one second. There is only one atlas. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, all right, let's get Global Food Initiative then. I'm not, uh, this is a Patreon deck, so I'm not as um, well-versed in its specifics as I could be. It's interesting though that um, I was going, hmm, no, let's hold that thought. So if I install double advance and then they fem one of these ice. Oh, if they fem, if they work it out and fem the curtain wall. No, because I can res the off the grid to force them to run one of these. Yeah, may, so that the wormhole's back to being live. Yes, and they don't have any breakers, so either one of this or this will force them to get a breaker. So let's do that. Let's install double advance and res off the grid. And discard a uh, curtain wall. Yeah, so they're going to need to, like, no, like, I guess they can fem one of these ice, but that still doesn't really help them because the whole problem is that fem, like, if they fem here, then run, then I can't do anything. So, and off the grid solves that in two ways. The first way is because they need to run here and here and the se like get a breaker on either archives or HQ. And the second way is that if they run archives or HQ, then it turns on the wormhole even without me needing to res the curtain wall. Um, although I don't quite have enough credits to do everything, but given that this is a 14 cost and 9 cost, that was probably, that probably went without saying. Um, but I can blue sun the off the grid if necessary. Or I guess blue sun on my ice, but let's see what my opponent wants to do. Right, so at this point, the only thing Right, so, like, I'm not actually sure, maybe Jinteki.net will tell me in in the future, like, maybe in the future Jinteki.net will be programmed to tell me, or maybe it does already tell me, I didn't realize, but I wonder if my opponent was running R&D just to bait the, no problem, just to bait the Atlas counter, I'm not sure. Honestly, it could be, but who knows. It seems like since they already know I have an Atlas counter and can get um, get an agenda to put in this remote if I don't already have one, it's kind of risky to do that for them. Just to like waste an action which could be used on Opusing to run to bait me into using the Atlas counter. 
but of course the cost the cost potential cost is so high for me like i would lose if i had the atlas counter and didn't use it because i thought that they were bluffing and yeah um what should i talk about now bookmark astrolabe yeah all these are cards plot okay so the same old thing the test run i i'm not sure have they drawn the fem yet no they haven't drawn the fem yet so they're shuffling away the fem the fem okay they're test running back the fem sure on hq all right Oh, maybe they're gonna vamp me? No, that doesn't work. Oh, legwork me. Um, right, and then it'll trash the off the grid. I think I'll, so 24, yeah, I think I'll res. So five, four, wait, no, this hive is off now because of, yeah, I have five points. So I think I will res the spider web just to um, drain my opponent some credits. Oh yeah, and the whole uh, wormhole thing that I talked about. Cool, so of course they break because there's no agendas on HQ. A stim hack, stim hacking the server. Um, it will not help since I have code and more, sorry. Okay, um, good game. That was a lot of interesting things happened. So thanks for watching and I will see you soon. Goodbye.